Hello there from Northern California. At 2,600 feet, it's hot. We're talking about a 03A3 Springfield. This particular Springfield is really made by Remington, but it's the uh, it's the model. And this particular rifle, um, we've had some interesting times with it. Uh, it's really a 308 Norma rechambered 30 odd six. At least that's what we've been thought to believe and it was a match rifle probably from the 60s 1962 and so the added cheek rest and the piece on the end here for the sights been changed and uh, at the same time it has um, a sight for the uh, without the scope and with the scope and it's pretty it's pretty standard for whatever it was it was probably pulled from the arsenal and then um, we've been known we we know, we know it as a Camp Perry uh, match rifle but uh, and most of the ones I've always known were 30 odd six which is where the problem for us began um, there is a story that says that the the rifles that were under a million a case had fallen out of an air, out of a truck, and uh, they had run over them, and they were so brittle that they had uh, cracked and broken. So then they went ahead and re retempered the uh, rifles and the mechanisms, and the uh, put them back together again, and then reused them, and then they didn't have any problem. Anything after a million was considered to be acceptable. This particular rifle has a stamp on one side, FJA, Lieutenant Colonel Frank J. Atwood from the uh, from New York, which was the um, Rochester uh, Arsenal, and that means each that's good enough. Each um, each one was inspected and proof marked and fired. Now, not all of them were used because this was done in 1943, but they definitely were making an effort to make sure they had sufficient weapons. Um, this particular rifle, uh, as we thought, was a 30 odd six. We had been told it was a 308 Norma, and uh, we couldn't get the 308 Norma round into the uh, rifle. So, my next conclusion: well, it must be a 30 odd six, because these were all originally 30 odd sixes. So we put a 30 odd six in. And my grandson, who's the cameraman, shot it. And we ended up with this. So and we some burns to the face. In some, yeah, flashback. So we ended up taking the rifle back to the gunsmith. And four of us stood around trying to figure out what the problem was. The only reason they assumed that it was a 308 Norma is because there were a set of dies that came with it in the box and they didn't have any 308 Norma we spent most of the day getting 308 Norma on the internet and they were $48 a box so the gun shop didn't have any so by looking at these they immediately just assumed that's what it was so we went back in and we tried we scratched our head and then some was thinking that it was a, some kind of a variant um, uh, wildcat wildcat mag of some sort and Finally, the decision was, they inspected the bore and everything after that yeah. scenario, that it needed to go inside the clip in order for the bolt to be able to get the extractor in. Now it became a 308 Norma. So today what we're going to do is bench fire it and then if it's successful and there's no mishaps then we will go ahead and then shoot it with safety glasses and we'll just start doing that right now we're going to bench shoot it and see what happens here um, best way to best way to do it get as far away as you can if you're not sure well, let me zoom up a bit here just in case so we have a... go when you're ready Huh. I think you blew our uh, wood off on the front. <laughs> oh, 
guess he's I told you that was too far. Well, don't worry about that. That's okay. Shit happens. Shit happens. <laughs> it worked. Yes, it did. Still here. We're still intact. Okay, let's, let's extract the shell and see if the case is uh, intact. Looks like it. Successful firing, so we're ready to go ahead and uh, shoot it. This is when the metal bites the dust here. We'll see what happens. <laughs> well, it hurts a little. The rubber hitting the road, Damien.